Yo, what is going on guys? Bobby here and today we have for you guys a very epic, very big match. Monthly final, month number 5 out of 6 versus Luminosity Gaming. So you guys know exactly how this works. We made a video on this about a month ago. Uh, we play in a very high stakes match where the winner throughout the season gets to make worlds and the loser makes last chance qualifier. So what this is, is worlds, you guys know what worlds is if you're you know following my channel you guys are familiar with what that is and then last chance qualifier is if you don't make worlds four teams from there at a land who all compete from asia north america south america and europe four of the best teams will make worlds from there so we put ourselves in a pretty bad situation against lg to start off the year losing two straight which means we had to win the last four in order to qualify for worlds from the world spot and we won two in a row but here we are in the fifth monthly final and this one i mean this one was pretty crazy to be honest so if you guys watched it you know i'm, I'm sure a lot of you have you know maybe watching it again you'll see something different but for those who didn't obviously we're not going to spoil we're not going to say what happened so let's get into the games here so you guys can see first set is going to be knockout um they're going to have daryl mr p and Bo. so a pretty interesting comp it's kind of a comp where the bow mines and the porters can do a lot for you so they're gonna go in heavy we're gonna save czar with a shield over there and get them trapped sans is gonna get a nice kill or it was the smoke i'm not too sure which one and we're gonna take a one to nothing lead in this game so we have gus pam and sprout which i mean it's a pretty decent comp it's pretty good we got our thrower we got our anti-tank and we got our range so i think it's a pretty nice comp um i like their comp as well it's a lot easy or not a lot easier but both comps are pretty easy to play but theirs is quite easy you know just roll in an end game bow mines mr p kind of just do your thing so you guys are going to notice in knockout there's a lot of poking um and that's just you know because you got to poke sometimes you can't go in it's not bounty where if you give someone a kill they have three stars so you can just return kill and barely be down if you if you die you die so it's pretty rough anyways sans is going to move over to this side and patchy is going to get on him so the goal for us is to try and keep the pam on patchy because pam is our anti-tank but at the same time you know if they're switching like crazy we're not going to force ourselves out of position we have a really nice position here and if patchy rolls in sans should be able to deal with it really easily so czar is going to move forward sans is going to block that off czar is doing a great job over there on the 2v1 he's going to be able to get a kill i dodge a couple mines shout out for a little bit later in the set and uh, we pick up some kills, and that is going to be it for game number one. So game number one goes really well. There's the goat himself, Mr. Czar, not sniffling this time. You know, no runny nose. He's in the zone right now. But yeah, so I mean, pretty strong start for us, not going to lie. I don't know why they have the camera on him for so long. Come on now, come on. There we go. So they bring us back to the game. Charles is flashing that foot pin. Obviously, we got our STMN pin. And they're going to try and do more or less the same thing. They're going to go up aggressive and we're going to see what we can do. So kind of looking back on this, I feel like we should have been more cognizant. We should have avoided the Mr. P porters more because we did feed them pretty early, pretty often. But yeah, I mean, still pretty strong start. Still like the comp. Things are going well. Uh, Patchy, you know, he's going to roll in kind of a adventurous role to say the least. I mean, he does get my shield out. Shield out. Zar does go down, but then I go down, or sorry, Patchy goes down as well. So 2v2 here, and it's kind of a weird 2v2 because we have a thrower, but they have a Mr. P, so it's someone that can kind of deal with the thrower, and then I'm just kind of shooting penguins this entire time, which is weird because I have what we call a big shot, which is a balloon shot. So I'm going to get my shot off on Chino over there. Uh, a couple misses from Sands. I think if Sands hits those shots... Uh, or one of the two shots it would be a pretty easy win for us because we were able to take down charles but with that being said you know chino i guess had a couple nice jukes and uh they are gonna get that round win over there so we're still feeling pretty comfortable i mean you know we won the first two and that one was pretty close again they're gonna be looking to get their mr p porter and kind of just set up and play a really easy game no hits yet by the mr p and we're trying to get all the mines possible Charles gets two right there, and again, that's something that we got to avoid, because now we just have to shoot these uh, porters for the rest of the game, and it's just kind of annoying. It takes our ammo, it makes it a little bit easier for Patchy to roll in, because our ammo's being taken, but yeah, I mean, it's pretty annoying, and we should have definitely done a better job at not getting hit by it, but yeah, I mean, we have pretty good position right now. I'm not using my gadget, because I'm trying to save them for endgame when Patchy rolls in, or, you know, when we can get an actual kill, 
Because just using it on someone full HP when they're just going to walk backwards is kind of a waste of a gadget. Uh, Chino hitting some really nice clips over there. Pam's going to use... Or I'm going to miss my Gus uh, shield. Pam's going to miss gadget. Zara's going to get a kill. And here, I think we got to somehow get the pinch on Patchy. Sans coming in for the pinch. He's going to get the kill, but unfortunately, he hits the mine. And now I'm kind of just ignoring the penguin. It hits me once, two, three. Damn, I probably should have shot the penguin there. But I don't think it would have made too much of a difference. But yeah, I definitely should have shot the penguin. Sans brought that up to me after. But again, like two kind of sloppy-ish rounds. Like I feel like those rounds could have went a lot better. And they were still pretty close. Watching it back, I always, you know, learn something new. This is one of the first times i'm watching it back and kind of figure out new stuff but again they're doing the same thing we're going where they're going to go double on our side and then have the mr p pinch to try and force us in a corner now again luckily for us they have a daryl we know they have a daryl so it's not something that can like really affect us at the start i'm going to catch patchy lacking over there so we're going to get a really early kill and a knockout when you get a really early kill like that you know that usually wins you the round uh especially at really high pro play so that's like a really big kill for us to get over there and then at this point we got to just you know try and take it slow uh just play to the numbers advantage and just you know get kills where we can and just not feed super that's like the very important part right now it's just you know don't feed super don't get hit none of us have been hit by anything yet we're just staying max distance hiding behind the walls trying to do our best to juke so I was going to get hit by one over there and we're going to get hit by a couple bow shots, but it's kind of inevitable. Like you are going to get hit by something. It's not like you can juke everything forever. Um, and yeah, they're going to go down. They don't really get much hits. And yeah, that's going to be a really good round one. So, I mean, we're looking good. We just got to win one more round. I got my super. Sans has his super. And I'm pretty sure Zard is very close to his. So, I mean, things are going pretty well for us. Patchy does have his super as well, and now they're going to try and break Sans's walls by putting the bow mines down. And again, this is where we kind of just got to chill, not get hit by the Mr. P. Sans gets hit twice. Doesn't really matter because Charles was only one shot away from his porter, so he was going to get it eventually. Not too big of a deal. Uh, but we're still in a pretty good position over here, hitting a couple shots. Uh, I do pop my shield sometimes when I know I'm going to hit a shot so I can cycle shields. Because if I hit, you know, two or three shots in a row once I use my shield... That means I'm one shot or two shots away from another one, and they're going to be low. We're going to be close to a shield, so we can kind of move in. And again, the shield's kind of only good late game, because that's the only time where any of our teams are really going in. So we're just kind of taking our time. I get a nice little double gadget thing over there, because I notice the smoke is, you know, going to come in soon. Smoke starts coming in. They're pretty low, and that was a pretty big sell by Czar. He kind of just gadgeted nothing. And him gadgeting nothing allowed Patchy to move in. And now they're saving all of their utility because they think they won. And we actually get them down to 11 HP. Which is kind of crazy because we're 11 HP away from winning the round. So that was, you know, again, pretty sloppy. Third round that we lost out of three that, you know, we probably should have won. Just made some pretty bad plays. Uh, but, you know, all good. They have their supers. We have our Pam super. And the Pam super is kind of the super that we most need because my super and, and Sansa super, I mean, that's pretty easy. It's not too hard to get those. Chino hitting some really nice clips over there on Czar. I got my super. So now, you know, we have all three. Or, yeah, now we have all three. They got two. So it's a pretty interesting, you know, even game. We're doing a pretty good job over here. And, you know, Chino's kind of doing his thing. That's a really good play from Patchy to get on the other side of the wall because if he was on the lower side, all three of them would have been there and they definitely would have gotten pinched by Gus Shots, Pam Gadget, you know, Sprout, of course. So that's a really good job by Patchy to get over there. That probably actually won them the round and it's something so subtle that a lot of people don't even realize. Um, but yeah, Patchy rolls in. Zar misses his Gadget. Uh, we do get a shield though and we get it on Zar. Uh, we're going to get the kill on Charles, so, you know, Patchy's won, it's looking good, and then there's one bow mine still in the middle of the map. I step on the bow mine, and we lose the round. I was so sad when I did that. I couldn't believe I stepped on that bow mine, so that is four out of four rounds that we lost in knockout that we probably should have won and then somehow sold, so that was pretty hard. But the next set is heist, and we love heist, so let's move on forward to it and show you guys what happened. So going into Kaboom, uh, these are going to be the comps. We're going to have Crow, Daryl, and Squeak. So Crow is really good against like tanks and stuff. Daryl, obviously good at getting damage. Good into Carl, but that's about it in this comp. The other two really hard counter me. And then we have Squeak, which has good matchup into Jesse and Tara, uh, but obviously doesn't do good at all into Carl. Now, Carl was found to be really good in scrims. I didn't think they would take it first pick, and I draft on our team. 
Uh, first pick Carl on a map like Kaboom where there's Eve and range brawlers and stuff like that. You know, Crow, Bonnie, Colette, all these brawlers is like kind of crazy. But it did well in scrims for the entire week leading up to the final. It was picked second in our scrims, picked third, fourth, but never first. So I really didn't think they would take it first, but they did end up taking it first. We do get some positioning here, but again, they have a really good comp. The Carl just tears into us. And then because they have a Carl, we kind of have to have some like anti-tank. So we have Daryl. And then once we pick Daryl, they go two brawlers that just destroy Daryl and Tara and Jesse. So, I mean, it's a pretty good comp for them. Sans also went on the wrong squeak star power, uh, which kind of sucks. Uh, our team, as you know, historically always had a habit of going on wrong stuff. Uh, but now we have positioning, so I mean the game is technically winnable. But you see the issue here is I can't really roll in because there's a Tara with pull. There's a Jesse, and you guys see exactly what happens. So I'm trying to roll in to create space kind of for my team to get my, you know, the other team low, get supers out, stuff like that. But again, it's really hard to follow up. It's just like, how are they supposed to do damage? And again, I roll in over the water, but they got supers. They got all this stuff. So it's like, what am I really supposed to do? I don't know. Uh, Zara's going to get a nice kill over there. And again, we're trying to get that damage down, but it's just, it's really hard. It is really, really hard with this comp to do that. So we're going to be able to kill Charles. I get my roll. I roll onto Patchy. I'm doing all I can. I get the bump onto Chino. I get on safe. So, I mean, we're, I'm trying my best. I, you know, we're not really doing the most in the world, but we're trying our best. Sand is going to get a crazy super on safe. Zar is going to jump up. He's not going to do as much damage as you can do, but I don't think that's really a big deal. We got the safe down to 7%. So, I mean, that's like... That's pretty good, you know, with this comp, all things considered, getting the safe down to 7 is pretty nuts, because I love their comp a lot more than I like our comp. Uh, but still, you know, a loss is a loss, and we played the start really bad. I feel like I W-keyed the start, so I just walked in a straight line at the start, which gave them a bunch of supers. I thought we would have to play aggressive into their comp, which, you know, sometimes even though they are good into you, if you just sit back and wait and do nothing, you're never going to win. So I tried to play aggressive, didn't work, so this game, different strategy. I'm going to wait out until I get my super and then just have my lanes poke and do what they can. Sand's doing a really good job. He gets a really early lane win. And what this allows is kind of Chino forces himself onto the left. And then I'm forced to move, or not forced, but I can move onto the right and kind of just do my thing. Um, going to get a kill over there. Sand is going to use his super on the Carl. I guess that was worth it because he got the kill. He probably could have nuked the safe. And we could have just done some like base race stuff, maybe. I don't know if that was a call or not, but Sans got the kill and we still have control. So we probably made the right decision. He's going to use a slow over there. I don't know if he was trying to hit Patchy or not, but we you know we're going to go for our little roll. We're going to be able to get Patchy with Sans. Sans is playing out of his mind this set, or this game, I mean, not, not this set. You know, we, we don't give you credit for game one, Sans. But this game, he's playing out of his mind. But you guys can see he's playing so good. We're, we're playing so well right now. You know, we're going to be able to get that kill. I'm going to get my roll and kind of just chain rolls, take the super of Charles. But you guys can see we're still barely winning. We've done all of this and we are barely, barely winning. So I feel like what we got to do more of here is like Zar pokes and Sans shoots the safe. I feel like because Sans can shoot the safe from our side of the river. Uh, so there, Zar, you know... Again, not a maximum jump that you could do with Crow, but still a good jump. We're winning by 50% right now. So, I mean, that's like pretty crazy in and of itself. Sans gets the kill. Carl in the corner. Um, myself and Zar are going to pinch it. We're going to be able to get the kill. Sans is going to finish it off. And we got a 50% lead with 40 seconds left. So, I mean, this is pretty winnable. I don't know. He has super, so I'm just going to run into his super, basically. Charge another one. He's going to get slowed by Sans super. Sans almost gets the kill. Uh, maybe could have been a game changer there, but he's going to go down to Carl instead. And now, you know, I know we're not necessarily attacking anyone specific, but we just need to get a little lead. I know they're not showing Patchy right now, but Patchy is so low. Charles is so low. And it, oh my God, man, what a crazy ending. And they're going to be able to barely, barely, barely take the lead. We played the end so bad. If we hit just a couple more shots, we could have won that ending. But I mean, props to them. I feel like that was one of our better played sets just because they had such a good comp diff. But at the same time, we still made the games pretty close. 
So, I mean, it's not, you know, crazy watching that. But again, a, a couple mistakes could have played it better and we probably could have won. So now we're down 2-0 in, in sets. You know, we kind of are the kings of reverse sweeping at this point. Reverse sweeping is kind of just in our blood. But, I mean, hands off to LG. They're playing this game with, you know, 100% confidence. They're playing it amazing. And, you know, they're just running away with this match, to be honest. So let's move on to set number three, which is Hard Rock Mine. And let's show you guys what happens there. So going into Hard Rock Mine, we end up with the comp of 8-Bit, Sandy, and Rico. Now, I hate playing Rico into Ruffs because Ruffs just 100% counters Rico. But we needed an anti-tank here because we had 8-Bit in the mid and Sandy, which isn't too good against tanks. This is a very tank-oriented team, so these guys just love to play tanks. Um, and we knew we we knew regardless of what we take, even if it's a tank counter, they're still going to tank last. So we had to go the Rico. Um, again, I don't love it into Dog, but it has a great matchup versus Ash and a great matchup versus Colette. So, I mean, two good matchups, one bad matchup. We'll take it, but again, you know, not the greatest thing in the world because in my in my belief, Ruffs does fully counter Rico. Uh, but yeah, you know, I, I like our comp. I think it's pretty good. Uh, they have Colette, Ruffs, and Ash. So, like, the Colette into 8-bit mid is kind of unusual. You, you know, we kind of mess around and see it in scrims sometimes, but not really in comp games. Uh, but this one, I don't know. This is kind of crazy. I never really get to play 8-bit. So now that I'm on the 8-bit and I'm laning Chino Colette, which Chino is, is pretty well known, not for his Colette, but at least in like, you know, the good level of Brawl Stars community, we know that Chino is very good at Colette. Now I kind of walk into his super there. I could have just walked back out. Um, I mean, I did at least get my super though. And the first, you know, few gem spawns of an 8-bit game are really telling. Usually, if 8-Bit gets turret within the first two or three gem spawns, the 8-Bit's going to win. If it takes a long time, the other team can get enough gems for them to win. And then, I mean, you know, we kind of got it somewhere in the middle. So, we're going to get a nice beam over there, and we're also going to pinch Patchy. So, now we have, you know, not full position, but we got position. You know, Zara's in a pretty aggro spot. I got my turret set up. And Chino, you, got, you guys are going to see, he's going to use his super a lot. Uh, to pick up gems, which is actually a really good method to pick up gems. So Zarya should have his way over here against the Ash when he has position. Um, we're going to be able to melt Chino over there. And we got Sands in the bush as well. So, I mean, we just have the setup exactly what we want. I mean, I really like our setup. We're really aggro. We have the aggro turret. Now, they're going to put the Rico, or the Ruffs on the Rico and the Ash on the Sandy. So, what does this do exactly? Is this makes us switch. And it kind of just gives them free positioning. Um, I think... Patchy probably should have gotten that kill. He didn't, which, you know, makes Chino get the kill. And because Chino has to get the kill, Zara is able to hit a clip. So it's 8-7 right now. Pretty close game. We get Charles to 100 HP. We have our turret set up. We have position. So things are looking pretty good here. Um, the th only issue is that one side of the map is kind of like completely open. So it's a little bit hard for Zara and for our Sandy to do anything. Uh, but we do have nine gems. Patchy's going to go for the W key. He is not going to get it. And here, I mean, it's 9-9. It's looking pretty good for us. A lot of Sandy value over there by Sands. But I think bad timing to do that. You know, really good clip over there by Zar. But we knew they are going to get the gem spawn. I think we should have waited a couple more seconds longer before Sands should have went in there. So we can try and get that gem. Uh, but with that being said, it's now 11-10. to 10. We have positioning. We're doing really good. Uh, Sandy super and all so we should be able to win this. I pick up the gem. We get the kill one nothing us and things I mean, they're looking really, you know, good I mean, I like our comp here. Zara's on a brawler that he's pretty comfortable on Sands is on a brawler that he's pretty comfortable on and although I don't like my matchup and I although I don't really love You know 8-bit. I never really play it uh, We only went down one time. So that's pretty good You know, we're kind of holding our own against the treated up Colette and everyone on the team is doing really well so I mean you know, props to the team. We're, we're doing pretty good. We have a decent comp. And, you know, into game two we go. So, they're going to go with a uh, lane switch over here. I don't know if this is the lanes to start off last game. I kind of forgot, to be honest, because I went down so fast and I was kind of focused on myself. But they're just trying to get the Ash on the Sandy, which, although it does feed Sandy supers, you can just run in a straight line at a Sandy. Like, the Sandy cannot kill you. Because you have that gadget as well, the Sandy really can't kill you. And, again, I get my turret really fast. But I do go down. Like that's, I guess, just a common theme. Sands is gonna miss pretty easy gadget, which kind of causes him to go down over there. But again, he's playing aggressive, which is pushing them back, which is get like allowing me and Zara to get pinches. So although he didn't play it perfectly, I still, you know, liked the play that he did. Uh, it just could have been done a little bit better. 
And now he's moving forward and he's doing his thing. Zara's gonna go down to the to the ash right there, which probably you know shouldn't be happening considering we're pinching. We both have a lot more range. But 5-4, you know, we're set up, we're looking good. Now this is kind of an interesting thing. Like, I don't know if I'm supposed to put my turret up here or not. And like Charles just moves up the left, and although I do really like the idea of lane switching and i'm all for it most of the time it kind of puts sans back in his spawn so i don't really know what to do here i mean sans does end up getting the kill but it does like give them a lot of map control like the whole left side of the map was free for them um and so it's really weird and now sans again he's moving back and i like this switch that's a really clean good switch we get the rico on the ash which is amazing we get sand sneaking on them, which is amazing. And now again, exact same situation, 8-7 in gems. We have full control, full positioning. Patchy's going to walk up that right side. And here we definitely don't switch. So good call by the team to kind of just stick around with what we have. Uh, Chino's going to go get that gem spawn. So right here, Sandy Super, we're set up. This should be game over. The game should end right here. 10-8, we have Sands going really aggressive. And at this point, we know that they're going to get the gem spawn. Uh, good super over there by Chino, which gets me to one shot, and now we get gem spawn. So I feel like Sans. I don't know. Watching that's kind of like it. Maybe could have been better if he healed up and gotten the gem, but at the same time he gets a kill, he gets a Sandy super, we get the gem. So I think he makes the right play over there. Um, and again, we get spawn, and it's weird because when they get spawn, they keep getting the gem, or we keep getting the gem. But when we get spawn, they keep getting the gem. So we're kind of trading over and over. And now myself and Sans are kind of pushed into this corner over here because we have no utility. Um, Zar is going to go down exactly when I pick up a gem on their side. And that is an issue because we need that gem to win the game. Um, and, you know, we just don't have the time to pick up the next gem. So that was kind of a careless death over there by Zar. And, you know, he's playing really well. Uh, but we really needed him to stay alive there and he didn't. So they're going to take that game over there. And now we are going to move into game number three. So if we lose this game, we are done. Game over. We lose. You know, that's it. And we go straight to LCQ. We have no shot at Worlds if we lose this. So loading in again. They're on match point. They're feeling themselves. You know, pretty decent comp. Um, Sans going to go aggro. Again, same with myself. I hit clips there. I hit clips. So I'm feeling it. I'm like, all right, I'm close to super. I move up. I try and get my super. I don't like my gadget there, but I also had a lot of gadgets to end uh, the recent games. So I wanted to be a little bit more, you know, active with my gadgets. Uh, but again, you know, really strong start. Um, you know, I didn't want to burn a gadget there because I already used one and didn't want one left for the rest of the game. But if we're up 4-2 with the 8-bit, I feel like we should be winning. You know? I feel like no matter the situation, no matter the comps, if we have an 8-bit and we have an early lead and we're set up, we should be winning. But the issue is the lane switches. Like, we have to have this Rico on the Ash or we're screwed. Ash gets the kill, lives on one shot, full rage, I peek it, Patchy hits a really nice wall peek, and now they have 10 gems. I move up nice and aggro as fast as I can. Um, and Patchy gets some gems, he's running away, uh, Zar almost able to get the kill. He's not. I go down. This is still salvageable for sure for Sans. He's going to get the kill. Zara's going to get the kill. So, I mean, you know, Colette isn't really the best in this situation, to be honest. So, this is definitely still a very winnable game. Patchy's going to get Gadget, but unfortunately, Zara goes down over there. Sans goes down over there. And we are going to get swept, spun on, and lose our world spot. Before I complain, you know, full congrats to them. They definitely deserve it. And uh, they're a much, much better team than I thought they would be going into the year. Um, so hats off to them. And, you know, they're my good friends. None of them have made worlds. So, you know, congrats to all of them for making worlds. I've told this, uh, them all this uh, in DMs uh, a while ago. But, you know, it doesn't hurt to say it again. Uh, but it does suck for us because that, you know, what that means for us is now we're going to go to LCQ, which is a tournament, like I said, that's going to, you know, be 16 teams from all over the world. So we're going to be facing kind of the second best from every region, we could say, because the best from every region, they qualified and they got the world spot. And this, you know, this year LG was the best in our region. Um, so, I mean, it is what it is. We're going to go to LCQ. You guys know we're a good land team. We're good when, we're, when our backs are against the walls. So, we took a little bit of time off. That's why I didn't make a YouTube video. 
um, in the past 10 days. You know, kind of just reset the mind. Haven't really opened Brawl Stars at all. But now, you know, we're back. Clear-minded. Gonna go to LCQ and do our very best. That's probably gonna be in a month and a bit. So that's gonna be really exciting. Gonna be more LAN experience. And then after that, we're pretty confident that we'll make Worlds um, like you're supposed to be. You know, I'm not trying to be cocky or anything. But, you know, we're gonna have confidence going into that. We think we're gonna make Worlds. And uh, I think if we make Worlds through LCQ, then it's going to be better than if we make it directly through the spot. Because we're going to have some nice little land warm up, going to have some practice, you know, work on our, you know, team skills, team synergy, scrimming, all that while everyone is watching us who made Worlds. So that's going to be it for the video. Again, one final time, congratulations to Luminosity for making Worlds. You know, big shouts to them, especially my, uh, my very, very, very good friends, Patchy and Chino. Um, but yeah, that's going to be it, and I will see you guys again shortly. Expect a YouTube video very soon, and until then, uh, have a good time, have a good day, and stay safe, guys. I'll see you guys later. Peace. Hey you. Yes, you there watching this on your phone. Have you ever wanted to be the best, the most handsome, the most loved player on your team, and support your favorite creator at the same time? Well, I have good news. You can be all of that and more, by using code Bobby. But you have to do it now because this is a limited time offer. Use code Bobby at any Supercell Games store.